Chapter 46, an improper land with difficulty keeps from improprieties. The Mei Yuan Yang vows to break off the marriage match. Lin Tai Yu, to resume our story, dropped off gradually to sleep about the close of the fourth watch, as there is therefore nothing more than that we can for the present say about her. Let us take up the thread of our narrative with Lady Feng. Upon me hearing that Madame Hei Sing wanted to see her, she could not make out what it could be about, so hurriedly putting on some extra things on her person and head, she got into a carriage and crossed over. Madame Hei Sing at once dismissed every attendant from her suite of apartments. I sent for you, she began, addressing herself to Lady Feng in a confidential tone not for anything else but on account of something which places me on the horns of a dilemma. My husband has entrusted me with a job, and being quite at my wit's ends how to act, I'd like first to consult with you. My husband has taken quite a fancy to you and Yang who is in our worthy senior's rooms. So much so that he's desirous to get her into his quarters as a secondary wife. He has deputed me, therefore, to ask her of our venerable ancestor. I know that this is quite an ordinary matter, yet I can't help fearing that our worthy senior may refuse to give her. But do you perchance see your way to bring this concern about? Lady Feng listened to him. You shouldn't, I say, go and bang your head against a nail, she then vehemently explained. Were our old ancestor separated from Yuan Yang, she wouldn't even touch her rice. However could she reconcile herself to part from her? Besides, our worthy senior has time and again said, in the course of a chat, that she can't see the earthly use of a man well up in years, as your lord and masters having here one concubine and there another, that cooping them up in his rooms is a mere waste of human beings. That he neglects his constitution and doesn't husband it and that he doesn't either attend diligently to his official duties, but spends his whole days in boozing with his young concubines. When your ladyship hears these nice doings of his, don't you feel enamored with that fine gentleman of ours? Were he even to try, at this juncture, to beat a retreat, he couldn't, I fear, effectively do so? Yet, instead of making an effort to turn tail, he wants to go and dig? the tiger's nostrils with a blade of straw. Don't, my lady, be angry with me, but I daren't undertake the errand. It's clear as day that it will be a wild goose chase. What's more, it will do him no good, but will, contrariwise, heap disgrace upon his own head. Our Mr. Chia, she is now so stricken in years that in all his actions he unavoidably behaves somewhat as a dotard. It would be well, therefore, for your ladyship to advise him what to do. It isn't as if he were in the prime of life to be able to do all these things with impunity. He's got at present a whole array of brothers, nieces, sons and grandsons. And should he still go on in this wild sort of way, how will he be able to face any of them? Madame Singh gave a sardonic smile. There are endless wealthy families with three and four concubines, she said, and is it an ours that such a thing won't do? But were I even to tender him as much advice as I can, it isn't at all likely that he'll abide by it. Even though that may be one beloved by our venerable senior, it doesn't follow that she'll very well be able to give a rebuff to a hoary bearded elderly son and, erewhile, an official, were he to express a wish to have her as an inmate of his household. I sent for you for no other purpose than to deliberate with you, and here you take the initiative and enumerate a whole array of shortcomings. Is there any reason why she commissioned you to go? Of course I'll go and speak to her. You make a bold statement that I don't give him any good counsel. But don't you yet know that, with a disposition such as his, he rushes before I can very well open my lips to advise him into a tantrum with me. Lady Feng was well alive to the fact that Madame Hei Sing was, by nature, simple and weak-minded, and that all she knew was to adulate Chia. She saw as to ensure her own safety, 
than she was in the next place ever ready. So greedy was she to grasp as much hard cash and as many effects as she could lay hold of for her own private gain that she left all family matters irrespective of important or unimportant under the sole control of she or she. But that whenever anything turned up involving any receipts or payments, she extorted an unusual percentage the moment the money passed through her clutches, giving out as a pretense. Well, she, uh, she is so extravagant that I have to interfere and affect sufficient economies to enable us to make up our deficits, and that she would not trust anyone, whether son, daughter, or servant, nor lend an ear to a single word of remonstrance. When she therefore now heard Madame Hessing speak as she did, she concluded that she must be in another of her perverse moods, and that any admonitions would be of no avail. So hastily forcing a smile. Why, lady, she observed, you're perfectly right in your remarks, but how long can I have lived, and what discrimination can I boast of? It seems to me that if a father and mother do not bestow, not a mere servant, girl like she is, but a living jewel of the size of her, on one like Mr. Chia, she to whom were they likely to give her? How can one give faith to words spoken behind one's back? So what a fool I was in cramming what I heard down my throat. Just take our Mr. Secundus, my husband, as an instance. If ever he does anything to incur blame, Mr. Chia Shep. And you, my lady, feel so wrath with him as to only wish you could lay hands upon him there and then and give him such a blow as would kill him downright. But the moment you set eyes on his face, your whole resentment vanishes, and lo, you again let him have, as of old, everything, and anything, and anything. Much though both of you might relish it in your hearts, our worthy ancestor will certainly therefore behave in the present instance with equal liberality towards Mr. Chia Shi. So, if her ladyship feels in the humor today, she'll let him have her, I fancy, at once this very day, if he makes the proper advances. But I'll go ahead and coax our venerable senior, and when your ladyship comes over, I'll find some pretense to get out of the way, and take along with me those two who may be present in her rooms, so as to make it convenient for you to broach the subject, if she gives her so much, the better. But if even she doesn't, it won't matter, for none of the inmates will have any idea what the object of your mission could have been. After listening to her suggestion, Madame Hissing began again to feel in a happier frame of mind. My idea is, she observed, that I shouldn't start by mentioning anything to our venerable senior, for what was she to say that she wouldn't give her, the matter would be simply quashed on the head. I can't help thinking that I should first and foremost quietly approach you and Yang on the subject. She, well, of course, feel extremely ashamed, but when I explain everything minutely to her, she'll certainly have nothing to say against the proposal, and everything will be all right. I can then speak to our old senior, and despite any desire on her part not to accede to our wishes, she won't be able to put the girl off, provided she herself be willing. For as the adage says, if a person wishes to go, it's no use trying to keep him. Thus, needless to say, the whole thing will be satisfactorily settled. You're really shrewd in your devices, my lady. Lady Fan smilingly ejaculated. This is perfect in every respect, for without taking Yuan Yang into account, what girl does not long to rise high, or hope to exalt herself, or think of pushing herself forward above the rest, as to cast away the chances of becoming half a mistress, and prefer instead being a maid, and merely becoming mine by the mate of some servant lad, quite so. Let a mason smile, but let's put you and Yang aside. Who is there, even among the various elderly waiting? Maids who look after the house, who wouldn't be only too willing to step into these shoes. You better then go ahead, but mind don't let the cat out of the bag. I'll join you as soon as I can finish my evening. Mew. You and Yang, thereupon secretly reflected Lady Fang, has always been an extremely shrewd-minded girl, to such a degree that there is notwithstanding all our arguments, no saying positively whether she'll accept or refuse. So were I to go ahead, and Madame Singh to follow me by and by, and by, 
There won't be any occasion for her to grumble or complain so long as she assents. But if she doesn't, why, Madam He Singh, who is so suspicious a creature, will possibly imagine that I've been gassing with her and been the means of making her put on side and assume high airs when Madam Hing finds then that my conjectures have turned out true again. Her shame will be converted into anger and she'll so vent her spite upon me that I shall, after all, be put in a false position. Would it not be better then that she and I should go together? For if she says yes, I'll be all right and if she replies, no, I'll be on the safe side, and no suspicion of any kind will fall upon me. At the close of her reflections, as I was about to cross over here, she remarked laughingly, Our aunt yonder sent us two baskets of quails, and I gave orders that they should be fried, with the idea that they should be brought to your ladyship in time for you to have some at your evening repast. Just as I was stepping inside the main entrance, I saw the servant boys carrying your curtain. They said that it was your ladyship's vehicle, that it had cracked, and that they were taking it to be repaired. Wouldn't it be as well then that you should now come in my carriage? For it will be better for you and me to get there together? At this suggestion, Madame Singh directed her servants to come and change her costume. Lady Feng quickly waited upon her, and in a while the two ladies got into one and the same curricle and drove over. My lady, Lady Feng, went on to say it would be well for you to look up our worthy senior, for were I to accompany you and her ladyship to ask me what was the object of my visit, it would be rather awkward. The best way is for your ladyship to go first, and I'll join you as soon as I divest myself of my fine clothes. Madame Hang noticed how reasonable her proposal was, and she readily betook herself to old Lady Chia's quarters. But after a chat with her senior, she quitted the apartment under the pretense that she was going to Madame Wang's rooms. Then making her exit by the back door, she passed in front of Yuan Yang's bedroom. Here she saw Yuan Yang sitting, hard at work, at some needlework. The moment she caught sight of Madame Singh, she rose to her feet. What are you up to? Madame He Singh laughingly inquired. Let me see. How much nicer you embroider artificial flowers now. So speaking, she entered, and taking the needlework from her hands, she scrutinized it while extolling its beauty. Then laying down the work and scanning her again from head to foot, she observed that her costume consisted of a half nude, gray thin silk jacket and a bluish satin waistcoat with scallops. That below this came a water, green jute, sloped as if pear, that her face resembled a duck's egg, that her hair was black and shiny, that her nose was very high, and that on both her cheeks were slightly visible several small flat moles. One Yang realized how intently she was being passed under scrutiny and began to feel inwardly uneasy, while utter astonishment prevailed in her mind Madame, she felt impelled to ask, what do you come for at this impossible hour? At a wink from Madame Hesing, her attendants withdrew from the room. Madame Hesing forthwith seated herself and grasped Yuan Yang's hand in hers. I've come, she smiled, with the special purpose of presenting you my congratulations. This reply enabled Yuan Yang at once to form within herself some surmise more or less correct of the object of her errand and suddenly blushing crimson, she lowered her head and uttered not a word. You know well enough, she may serve Madame Singh resume, that there's not a single reliable person with my husband. But much though we'd like to purchase some other girl, we fear that such as might come out of a broker's household wouldn't be quite spotless and tapeless, nor would one be able to get any idea what her failings are until after she has been purchased and brought home. When she too will be sure, in two or three days to behave like an imp and play some monkey tricks. That's why we thought of choosing some home-born girl out of those which throng in our mansion. But then, again, we could find none decent enough. For if her looks were not at fault, her disposition was not proper. And if she possessed this quality, she lacked that one. Hence it is that after repeatedly choosing with dispassionate eye during half a year, he finds that there's only you among that. 
whole bevy of girls whose worth and that in looks, behavior, and deportment your gentle, trustworthy, and perfection itself in every respect. His intention, therefore, is to ask your hand of our old lady and take you over and attach you to his quarters. You won't be treated as want, merely purchase, or newly sought for outside. For the moment you put your foot into our house, you'll at once have your face shaved and be promoted to a secondary wife. So you'll thus attain as much dignity as honor. More, you're one who is anxious to excel. And as the proverb says, gold will still be exchanged for gold. My husband has, who the thought it, taken a fancy to you. So when you now enter our threshold, you'll fulfill the wish you've cherished all along with such high purpose and lofty aim and stop the mouths of those persons who are envious of your love. Therefore, let's go and lay the matter before our venerable ancestor. Arguing the while, she dragged her by the hand with the idea of hurrying her off there and then. Wang Yang, however, blushed to her very ears, and snatching her hand out of her grip, she refused to budge. Madame Hsi was conscious that she was under the spell of intense shame. What's there in this to be ashamed, she continued. You needn't besides read a word. All you have to do is to follow me. Yuan Yang continued to droop her head and to decline to go with her. Madame Hing, perceiving her behavior, went on to exhort her. Is it likely, pray, she said, that you still hesitate? If you actually don't feel inclined to accept the offer, you're, in real truth, a foolish girl. For here you let go the chances of becoming the secondary consort of a master and choose instead to continue a servant girl. You'll be united in two or three years to no one higher than some young domestic and remain as much a bond servant as ever. If you come along with us, you know that my disposition too is gentle. That I'm not one of those persons who don't show any regard for anyone. That my husband will also treat you as well as he does everyone else. And that when in the course of a year or so you give birth to a son or daughter, you'll be placed on the same footing as myself. And of all servants at home, will any you may wish to employ not being to move to execute your orders. If now that you have a chance of becoming a mistress, you don't choose to, why? You'll miss the opportunity, and then you may repent it, but it will be too late. Yuan Yang still kept her head bent against her chest and spake not a syllable by way of reply. How is it, added Madame Haysing, that you, who've ever been so quick, have now too begun to be so infirm of purpose. What is there that doesn't fall in with your wishes? Just tell me, and I can safely assure you that you'll have everything done to satisfy you. You and Yang observed, as hitherto, perfect silence. I suppose, thou made him hasting, but having a father and mother, you yourself don't wish to speak for fear of being put to the blush, and that you want to wait until such time as they consult you about it. Hey, this is quite right. But you'd better let me go and make the proposal to them and tell them to come and ascertain your wishes. And whatever your answer then may be just entrusted to them. This said, she sped into Lady Feng's suite of rooms. Lady Feng had long ago changed her attire and availed herself of the absence of any bystander in her apartments to confide the whole matter to Ping Er. Ping Er nodded her head and smiled. According to my view, success is not so certain, she observed. She and I have often secretly talked this matter over, and the arguments I heard her propound don't make it the least probable that she'll consent. But all we can say now is, We'll see, Madam Singh, Lady Feng remarked, is sure to come over here to consult with me, if she has a sense. Well, and good. But if she hasn't, she'll bring displeasure upon her own self, and won't she feel out of countenance if all of you are present? So tell the others to fry several quails and get anything nice that goes well with them and prepare it for our past while you can go and stroll about it some other spot and return when you fancy she is gone. Hearing this, Ping Er transmitted her wishes word for word to the matrons, after which she sauntered leisurely all alone into the garden 
When Yuan Yang saw Madame Haysing depart, she concluded that she was bound to go into Lady Feng's rooms to consult with her, and that someone was sure to come and ask her about the proposal, so thinking it advisable to cross over to this side of the mansion to get out of the way, she consequently repaired in quest of Hugh Po. Should our old mistress, she said to her, ask for me, just say that I was so unwell that I couldn't even have any breakfast that I've gone into the garden for a stroll, but that I will be back at once. Yu Po undertook to tell her so, and Yuan Yang then betook herself too into the garden. While lolling all over the place, she, contrary to her expectations, encountered Ping Er. Uh, Ping Er uh, looked round to see that there was no one about. Here comes the new secondary wife, she smilingly exclaimed. Yuan Yang caught this greeting and promptly the color rose to her face. How strange it is, she rejoined, that you've all colluded together to come with one accord and scheme against me. But wait until I've had it out with your mistress and then I'll set things all right. When Ping Air observed the angry look on Yuan's countenance, her conscience was so stricken with remorse on account of the inconsiderate remark she had passed that drawing her under the maple tree she made her sit on the same boulder as herself and then went so far as to recount to her from beginning to end all that transpired and everything that was said on lady feng's return a short while back from the off mansion blushes flew to yu wang yang's cheeks facing ping Er. She gave a sardonic smile. We've all ever been friends, she said. Yes, he said, Jen, who posts a young, Sir Chuan, Sai Siai Chuan, she, yeah, Chuan Mu, who is in the Shiai service and is now gone. For Jen and Ching Chang Chuan, now deceased. So we left the Yuan Hai. Ever since our youth up, how many chats have the ten or dozen of us not had? And what have we not been up to together? But now that we've grown up, each of us has gone our own way. Yet my heart is just what it was in days gone by. Whenever there's anything for me to say or do, I don't try to impose upon any of you. So just first, treasure in your heart the secret I'm gonna tell you, and don't mention it to our lady Secunda. Not to speak of our senior master wishing to make me his concubine, were even our lady to die this very moment, and he to send endless gold between and countless betrothal presents with the idea of wedding me and taking me over as his lawful primary wife, I wouldn't also go. Ping Ear was at this point desirous to put in some observation, when from behind the boulder became audible the loud tones of laughter. You most barefaced girl, a voice cried. It's well, you're not afraid of your teeth falling when you utter such things. These words reached the ears of both girls and so unawares were they taken that they got a regular start and jumping up with all haste they went to see behind the boulder. They found no one else than a Si Jen who presented herself before them with a smiling countenance and asked, What's up? Do tell me, as she spoke. The trio seated themselves on a rock. Ping Air then imparted to Ha Si Jen as well the drift of their recent conversation. Properly speaking, we shouldn't pass such judgments, Sai Jen remarked after listening to her confidences, but this senior master of ours is really a most licentious libertine. So much so, that whenever he comes across a girl with any good looks about her, he won't let her out of his grasp. Since you don't like to entertain his offer, Ping Er suggested, I'll put you up to a plan. What plan is it? Yuan Yang inquired. Just simply tell our old Mr. Springer left. This answer that you've already been promised to our master, Secundus, Mr. Lin. Our senior master then won't very well be able to be importunate. Yeah? Ejaculated Nina. What a thing you are. Do you still make such suggestions? Didn't your mistress the other day out of this silly nonsense? Who'd have thought it? The words have now come true. If you won't have either of them, Sai Jian smiled. My idea is that you should tell our old lady point blank and ask her to give out that she promised you long ago to our master, number two, Pyle. You, our senior master, will then banish this fad from his mind. Yu and Yang was overcome with anger, shame, and exasperation. 
What dreadful vixens both of you are, she shouted. You don't deserve a natural death. I find myself in a fix and treat you as decent sort of persons and confide in you so that you should arrange matters for me. And not to say that you don't bother yourselves a rap about me. You take turn and turn about to poke fun at me. You're under the impression in your own minds that your fates are sealed and that both of you are bound by and by to become secondary wives. But I can't help thinking that affairs under the heavens don't so certainly fall in all ways with one's wishes and expectations, so you better now pull up a bit and not be cheeky to such an excessive degree. Both her companions then realized in what state of despair she was and promptly forcing a smile. Dear sister, they said, don't be so touchy. We've been ever since we were little mites like very sisters. All we've done is to spontaneously indulge in a little fun uh, spot where there's no one present. But tell us what you've decided to do so that we too should know and set our minds at ease. Decided what? Yuan Yang cried. All I know is that I won't go. That's finished. King Gary, your grand won't go. That's finished. You mightn't go, she interposed, but it isn't likely that the matter will drop. You're well aware what sort of temperament that of our senior masters is. It's true that you're attached to our old mistress's rooms, and that he can't just at present presume to do the least thing to you. But can it be, forsooth, that you'll be with the old dame for your whole lifetime? You'll also have to leave to get married, and if you then fall into his hands, it won't go well with you. Yuan Yang smiled ironically. I won't leave this place so long as my old lady lives, Wan Yang protested. In the event of her ladyship departing this life, he'll have, under any circumstances, to also go into mourning for three years. For there's no such thing as starting by marrying a concubine soon after a mother's death. And while he waits for three years to expire, can one say what may not happen? It will be time enough to talk about it when that date comes. But should I be driven to despair from being hard-pressed, I'll cut my hair off and become a nun. If not, there's yet another thing. That, and as for a whole lifetime, I shall not join myself to a man. What joy will not then be? Mine for having managed to preserve my purity. In very truth, Pinger and Asijan laughed. This vixen has no sense of shame. She has now more than ever spoken whatever came foremost to her lips. What matters a moment's shame? Yawn, Yang, rejoined when things have reached this juncture. But if you don't believe my words, well, you'll be able to see by and by. Then you'll feel convinced. Madam Singh said a short while back that she was going to look up my father and mother. But I'd like to see whether she'll proceed to Nanking to find them. Your parents are in Nanking looking. After the house is being asset. And they can't come up? Yet, in the long run, they can be found out. Your elder brother and your sister-in-law are besides in here at present. You poor thing are a child born in this establishment. You're not like us two who are solitary creatures here. Whoa. Solitary creatures here. Well, what? Does it matter whether I be born here or not? Wan Yang exclaimed. You can lead a horse to a fountain, but you can't make him drink. So if I don't listen to any proposals, is it likely, may I ask, that they'll kill my father and mother? While the words were still on her lips, they caught sight of her sister-in-law advancing from the opposite side. As they couldn't at once get in your parents' as a genuine faith, for certainty, told your sister-in-law, All this wench is good for you, Wan Yang shouted, is to rush about as if selling camels in the six states. If she heard what I said, she won't feel flattered. But while she spoke, her sister-in-law approached them. Where did I look for you? Her sister-in-law smilingly observed. Have you this one over here? Come along with me. I've got something to tell you. He or Hainisi Jen speedily motioned to her to sit down. But Yuan Yang's sister-in-law demurred. Young ladies, pray be seated. I've come in search of our girl to tell her something. Is it Jen and Bean? Yeah. Thing, perfect ignorance. What can it be that it's so pressing? They said with a smile. We were engaged in guessing puns here, so let's find out this before you go. 
What do you want to tell me? What do you want to tell me? Wan Yang inquired. Speak out. Follow me, her sister in law laughed. When we get over there, I'll tell you. Yes, yes, I'm going to tell you. Is it perchance what Madame Sins told you? Wan Yang asked. Since you, miss, know what it's all about, her sister in law added smilingly. What else remains for me to do? Be quick and come with me and I'll explain everything. Verily, it's a piece of happiness as large as the heavens. Wan Yang, at these words, rose to her feet and spat contemptuously. With all her might in her sister-in-law's face, pointing at her, Be quick, she cried abusively, and stop that filthy tongue of yours. It would be ever so much better were you to bundle yourself away from this. What good tidings and what peace of happiness. Little wonder is it that you long and crave the whole day long to see other people's daughter turned into a secondary wife as one and all of your family would rely upon her to act contrary to reason and right. A whole household has been converted into secondary wives, but the sight fills you with such keen jealousy that you would like to also lay hold of me and throw me into the pit fire. If any honors fall to my share, all of you outside will do everything disorderly and improper and raise yourselves in your own estimations to the status of uncles and aunts. But if I don't get any and come to grief, you'll draw in your foul necks and let me live or die as I please. While indulging in this raillery, she gave vent to tears. Ping Er and Hesse Jen did all they could to reason with her so as to prevent her from crying. Her sister-in-law felt quite out of county. Whether you mean to accept the proposal or not, she consequently said, you can anyhow speak nicely. It isn't worth the while dragging this one in and involving that one, the proverb adequately says. In the presence of a dwarf, one mustn't speak of dwarfish things. Here you've been heaping. Insult upon me, but I didn't presume to retaliate. These two young ladies have, however, given me no provocation whatever. And yet by referring, as you've done, in this way and that way to secondary wives, how can people stand it peacefully? You shouldn't speak so, sighed so Jen and Ping Air quickly, remonstrating. She didn't allude to us, but don't be implicating others. Have you heard of any ladies or gentlemen who would like to raise us to the rank of secondary wives? What's more, we two have neither father nor mother nor brothers within these doors to avail themselves of our positions to act in a way. Contrary to right and reason, if she abuses people, let her do so. It isn't worth our while to be touchy. Seeing Yuan Yang resume, that the abuse I've heaped upon her head has put her to such shame that she doesn't know where to go and screen her face. She tries to egg you two on, but you two have, fortunately, your wits about you. Though quite impatient, I never started arguing the question. She was who chose to speak just now. Her sister-in-law felt inwardly much disconcerted and beat her retreat in high dudgeon. But Yu and Yang so lost her temper that she still went on to abuse her. And it was only after Ping Er and Heise Jen had admonished her for ever so long that she let the matter drop. What were you hiding there for, Ping Er? Eh? Asked Shi Jen. We couldn't see anything of you. I went uh, to see Jen explained into who'd have thought it I got there gone home. What my suspicions were was that I hadn't come across him in this quarter's rooms to see our Mr. Paul Yu. But a little too late and they told me that he had however aroused as I couldn't make out how it and I was about to go and hunt him up in Miss Lin's apartments when I met one of her servants who said that he hadn't been there either. Then, just as I was surmising that he must have gone out of the garden, behold, you came, as luck would have it, from the opposite direction. But I dodged you so you didn't see anything of me. Subsequently, she too appeared on the scene, but I got behind the boulder from the back of these trees. I, however, saw that you two had come to have a chat. Strange to say, though you have four eyes between you, you never caught a glimpse of me. Scarcely had she concluded this remark than they heard someone else from behind laughingly exclaim, Four eyes never saw you, but your six eyes haven't as yet found me out. The three girls received quite a shock from fright, but turning round, they perceived that it was no other person than Pan. 
Where do you hail from? I was just leaving Cousin Gordo's power. He laughed when I noticed you coming along just in front of me, and knowing well enough that you were bent upon finding me. I concealed myself to have a lock with you. I saw you then go bow with uplifted head into the court, walk out again, and ask everyone we met on your way. But there I stood convulsed with laughter. I was only waiting to rush up to you and frighten you when I afterwards realized that you too were prowling stealthily about. So I readily inferred that you also were playing a trick upon someone. Then when I put out my head and looked before me, I saw that it was these two girls, so I came behind you by a circuitous way. And as soon as you left, I forthwith sneaked into your hiding place. Let's go and look behind there. Peter suggested laughingly. We may possibly discover another. We may possibly discover another. Couple, there's no saying, there's no one else. How oh, you laugh, you laugh. Yuan Yang had long ago concluded that every word of the conversation had been overheard by Pao. You, but leaning against the rock, she pretended to be fast asleep. Pao, he gave her a push. This stone is cold, he smiled. Let's go and sleep in our rooms. Won't it be better there? Saying this, he made an attempt to pull Yuan Yang to her feet. Then hastily pressing Pinyur to repair to his quarters and have some tea, he united his efforts with those of a Sijian and tried to induce Yuan Yang to come away. Yuan Yang at length got up, and the quartet betook themselves, after all, into the I Hung Court. How oh, you had caught every word that had fallen from their lips a few minutes back, and felt, indeed, at heart so much distressed on Yuan Yang's behalf, that throwing himself silently on his bed, he left the three girls in the outer rooms to prosecute their chat and laugh. On the other side of the compound, Madame Singh about this time inquired of Lady Feng who Yuan Yang's father was. Her father, Lady Feng replied, is called Qin Tizai. He and his wife are in Nanking. They have to look after our houses there so they can't pay frequent visits to the capital. Her brother is the Wen. He acts at present as our senior's accountant but her sister-in-law too was employed. In our worthy ancestors, yonder is head washerwoman, but an aching thereupon dispatched a servant to go and call Wen Yang's sister-in-law. On Mrs. Chin Wen, as Yang's arrival, she told her all. Mrs. Chin Wen just... Chin was naturally pleased and left in capital spirits to find Yuan Yang, in the hope that the moment she communicated the offer to her, the whole thing would be satisfactorily arranged. But contrary to all her anticipations, she had to bear a good blowing up from Yuan Yang and to be told several unpleasant things by Zai Zhen and Ping Er so that she was filled with as much shame as indignation. She then came and reported the result to Madame Singh. It's no use, she said. She gave me a scolding. But as Lady Fane was standing by, she could not summon up courage enough to allude to Pierre. So she added, See, Jen, too, helped her to rape me, and they told me a whole lot of improper words which could not be breathed in a mistress's ears. It would thus be better to arrange with our master to purchase a girl and have done. For from all I see, Neither can that mean Vixen enjoy such great good fortune, nor we such vast propitious luck. What's that again to do with Hezi Jen? How came they to know anything about it? Madame Xing explained. Upon learning the issue, who else was present? She proceeded to inquire. It was Miss Peeing, was Chen's wife's reply. Shouldn't you have given her a slap on the mouth? Lady Feng precipitately shouted. As soon as I ever put my foot outside the door, she starts gadding about, and I never see so much as her shadow when I get home. She too is bound to have had a hand in telling me something or other. Miss Ping wasn't present. Chin's wife protested. Chin's wife protested. Looking from a distance, it seemed to me like her, but I couldn't see distinctly. Even the mere surmise on my part that it was she. Well, go and fetch her at once, Lady Fanny shouted to a servant. Tell her that I've come home, and that Madame Singh is also here and wants her to help her in her hurry. Feng Er uh, quickly came up to her. Miss Lin, she observed, dispatched a messenger for her, and asked her in writing three and four times before she at last went. 
I advised her to get back so soon as your ladyship stepped inside the gate. But tell your mistress, Miss Lyons said, that I've put her to the inconvenience of coming round, as I've got something for her to do for me. This explanation satisfied Lady Feng and she let the matter drop. What has she got to do? She purposely went on to ask that she will trouble her day after day. Madame Yixing was driven to her wit's ends. As soon as the meal was over, she returned home. And in the evening, she communicated to Chia Chi the result of her errand. After some reflection, Chia she promptly summoned Chia Lian. There are other people in Nanking to look after a property, he told him on his arrival. There's not only one family, so be quick and deputy someone to go and summon Chen Tsai to come up to the capital. Last night a letter arrived from Nanking. Chia letter arrived from Nanking, Chia Lian rejoined, to the effect that Chen Tsai had been suffering from some flood obstruction in the channels of the heart. So a coffin and money were allowed from the other mansion. Whether he be dead or alive now, I don't know. But even if alive, he must have lost all consciousness. It would therefore be a fruitless errand to send for him. His wife, on the other hand, is quite deaf. Hearing this, Chiyoshi gave vent to an exclamation of reproof and next launched into abuse. You stupid and unreasonable rascal, he shouted. Is it you of all people who are up to those things? Don't you yet bundle yourself off from my presence? Chia Lian withdrew out of the room in a state of trepidation. But in a short while, Chia Chi gave orders to call Chin Wen, Chian. Chia Lian, meanwhile, remained in the outer study, for as he neither ventured to go home nor presumed to face his father, his only alternative was to tarry behind. Presently, Chin Wen, hesitantly Chin Wen, hiding a rod. The servant, lads, led him straight away past the second gate, and he only came out again and took his departure after sufficient time had elapsed to enable one to have four or five meals in. Chia Lien could not for long summon up courage enough to ask what was up, but when he found out, after a time, that she and she had gone to sleep, he eventually crossed over to his quarters. In the course of the evening, Lady Fain told him the whole story. Then, at last, he understood the meaning of the excitement. But to revert to Yuan Yang, she did not get, the whole night, a wink of sleep. On the morrow, her brother reported to Dowager Lady Chia that he would like to take her home on a visit. Dowager Lady Chia uh, accorded her consent and told her she could go and see her people. Yuan Yang, however, would have rather preferred to stay where she was, but the fear lest her old mistress should give way to suspicion placed her under the necessity of going much against her own inclinations, though it was. Her brother then had no cause but to lay before her chair she's proposal and all his promises that she would occupy an honorable position and that she would be a secondary wife with control in the house. But Yuan Yang was so persistent in her refusal that her brother was quite nonplussed, and her brother was quite nonplussed, and he was compelled to return and inform Chia Xie. Chia, she flew into a dreadful passion. I'll tell you what, he shouted. Let your wife go and tell her that I say that she must, like the goddess Chang herself, who has from olden times shown a predilection for young people, only despise me for being advanced in years, that as far as I can see, she must be hankering after some young men. But it must most likely be Pao. You, the probably lying that too. If she fosters these affections, warn her to at once set them at rest. For should she not come, when I'm ready to have her, who will by and by venture to take her? This is the first thing. Should she imagine in the next place that because our venerable senior is fond of her, she may in the future be engaged to be married in the orthodox way. Tell her to consider carefully that she won't very well be able to escape my grip, no matter in what family she may marry, that it's only in case of her dying or of her not. Waiting anyone throughout her life that I shall submit to her decision. Under other circumstances, urge her to seize the first opportunity and change her mind as she'll come in for many benefits. To every remark that Chia she uttered, Chen Wen, Siang Akusai Akuzi. Yes, he said. Mind you don't humbug me, Chia she observed. 
I shall tomorrow send again your mistress around to ask again. If you two have spoken to her and she hasn't given a favorable answer, well, then no blame will fall on you. But if she does assent when she broaches the subject with her, look out for your heads, Chin Wen, sighing eagerly, expressed his obedience over and over again, and withdrawing out of the room, he retraced his footsteps homeward. Nor did he have the patience to wait until he could commission his womankind to speak to her. Indeed, he went in person and told her face to face the injunctions entrusted to him. Yuan Yang was incensed to such a degree that she was at a loss. What reply to me? I'm quite ready to go, she rejoined after some cogitation. But you people must take me before my old mistress first and let me tell her something about it. Her brother and sister, in law flattered themselves that reflection had induced her to alter her previous decision, and they were both immeasurably delighted. Her sister-in-law there and then led her into the upper quarters and ushered her into the presence of old lady Chida. As luck would have it, Madame Wang, Mrs. Lady Feng, how shy and the other girls were together with several respectable outside married women who acted as housekeepers, having some fun with old lady Chia. Wang Yang observed where her mistress was seated and hastily dragging her sister-in-law before her. She fell on her knees and explained to her, with tears in her eyes, what proposal Madame Singh had made to her, what her sister-in-law, who lived in the garden, had told her, and what message her brother had recently conveyed to her as I would not accept his advances, she continued, our senior master has just now gone so far as to insinuate that I was violently attached to Pao. You. Or if that wasn't the case, my object was to gain time, so as to espouse someone outside. That were I eager to go up to the very heavens, I couldn't during my lifetime escape his clutches, and that he would, in the long run, wreak his vengeance on me. I have absolutely made up my mind, so I may state in the presence of all of you here that I'll, under no circumstances, marry, as long as I live, any man whatsoever, not to speak of, his being a pal, you, precious jade, but even a pal chin, precious gold, a pao yin, precious silver, a pao tian wang, precious lord of heaven, or a wang tai, precious emperor, and it done, were even your venerable ladyship to press me to take such a step. I couldn't comply with your commands, though you may threaten to cut my throat with a sword. I am quite prepared to wait upon your ladyship till you depart this life. But go with my father, mother, or brother, or brother, or either commit suicide or cut my hair off, and go and become a nun. If you fancy that I'm not in, Earnest in that, I'm temporarily using this language to put you off me. As surely as heaven, earth, the spirits, the sun, and moon look upon me, my throat be covered with boils. Yuan Yang had, in fact, upon entering the room, brought along a pair of scissors concealed in her sleeve, and while she spoke, she drew her hand back, and disheveling her tresses, she began to clip them. When the matrons and waiting maids saw what she was up to, they hurriedly did everything they could to induce her to desist from her purpose. But already half of her locks had gone. And when they found on close inspection that with the thick crop of hair she happily had, she had not succeeded in cutting it all, they immediately dressed it up for her. Upon hearing of Chai Shi's designs, Dowager Lady Chia was provoked to displeasure. Her whole body trembled and shook. Of all the attendants I've had, she cried, there only remains this single one upon whom I can depend. And now they want to conspire and carry her off. Noticing the Madame Wang standing close to her, she turned herself towards her. All you people really know is to impose upon me, she resumed. Outwardly, you display filial devotion, but secretly, you plot and scheme against me. If I have what that's worth having, you come and done me for it. If I have anyone who's nice, you come and ask for her. What's left to me is this low waiting, May. But as you see that she serves me faithfully, you naturally can't stand it 
and you're doing your utmost to estrange her from me so as to be the better able to play your tricks upon me. Xiao Luang quickly rose to her feet. She did not, however, quickly rose to her feet. She did not, however, dare to return a single syllable in self-defense. Mrs. Shui noticed that Madame Wang herself came in for her share of blame, and she did not feel as if she could any longer make an attempt to tender words of advice. Bao Wang, the moment she heard Yuan Yang speak in the strain she did, seized an early opportunity to lead the young ladies out of the room. And Lei Chun was a girl with plenty of common sense, so reflecting within herself that Madame Wang could not, in spite of the insult heaped upon her, very well presumed to say anything to exculpate herself. That Mrs. Hu Zui could not, of course, in her position of sister, bring forward any arguments that Pao Chai was unable to explain things on behalf of her maternal aunt, and that Li Wan, Lady Feng, or Pao, you could still less take upon themselves the right of censorship she thought the opportunity rendered. Necessary the services of a daughter, but as Yin Chun was so quiet and Si Chin so young, she consequently walked in. No sooner did she overhear from outside the window what was said inside, and forcing a smile, she addressed herself to her grandmother. How does this matter concern Madame Wan, my mother? She interposed. Venerable senior, just consider, this is a matter affecting her husband's eldest brother. And how could she, a junior sister-in-law, know anything about it? But before she had exhausted all her arguments, Dowager Lady Chia's countenance thawed into a smile. I've really grown stupid from old age, she exclaimed. This is also only for me. This eldest sister of yours is most reverent to me. And so unlike that senior lady of mine, who only knows how to regard her lord and master and to simply do things for the mere sake of appearances when she deals with her mother-in-law, I therefore done her a groan. Mrs. Zusora confined her reply to a yes, dear senior, you're so full of prejudices. She afterwards observed that you love your youngest son's wife more than any one of the others. But it's quite natural. I have no prejudices, old lady Chia protested. Ah, you, she then proceeded, I unjustly found fault with your mother. But how was it that even you didn't tell me anything, but that you looked down while she was having her feelings trampled upon? Could I smile pale? You have taken my mother's part and run down my senior uncle and aunt. If my mother did not bear the whole blame, Upon whom could she throw it? And had I admitted that it was I who was entirely at fault, you venerable ancestor wouldn't have believed me. What you say is quite reasonable. His grandmother laughed. So be quick and fall on your knees before your mother and tell her, Mother, don't feel aggrieved. Our old lady is so advanced in years. Do it for pale. You say, get this suggestion. Thou, you hastily crossed over and dropping on his knees, he was about to open his lips when Madame Wang laughingly pulled him up. Get up, she cried at once. This will do it all. Is it likely? Pray that you would tender apologies to me on behalf of our venerable ancestor. Hearing this pow, you promptly stood up. Even that girl thing didn't call me to my senses. Dowager Lady Chia smiled again. I don't lay a word to your charge, worthy senior, Lady Feng remarked smilingly. And yet you brand me with reproach. This rejoinder amused Dowager Lady Chia. This is indeed strange, she said to all that. But I'd like to listen to these charges. Who told you, dear senior, Lady Feng resumed, to look after your attendants so well and lavish such care on them as to make them plump and fine as water onions? However can you therefore bear people a grudge? If they ask for her hand, I'm lucky for her hand. I'm lucky for you, your grandson's wife. For where are your grandson? I would long ere this have proposed to her. Would I have ever waited up to the present? Is this any fault of mine? Dowager Lady Chia laughed. Of course it's your fault, venerable senior. Lady Feng retorted with a smile. Well, in that case, I too don't want her. Old lady, she proceeded laughing. 
Take her away and have done. Wait until I go through this existence, Lady Feng responded. And in the life to come, I'll assume the form of a man and apply for her hand. Take her along, Dowager Lady Chia laughed, and give her to Lion. Her to attach to his apartments. And we'll see whether that bare-faced father-in-law of yours will still wish to have her or not. Her is not a match for her. Lady Fang added. He's only a fit mate for such as myself and Pink here. A pair of loudish bumpkins like us to have anything to do with such a one as herself. At this rejoinder, they all exploded into a hearty fit of laughter, but a witty maid thereupon announced, Our senior lady has come. So Madame Wong immediately quitted the room to go and meet her. But any further particulars which you reader may like to know will be given in the following chapter, so listen to it.